Greetings fellow students, I'm senior student David Lance. Today I'll show you how to use Adobe Photoshop to create your own logos for your own digital portfolios. In this video you'll be shown the basics of Photoshop, some problems that you might encounter, and some frequently asked questions. I hope that by the end of this video you will no longer have to return to this video ever again, and that you'll be able to use Adobe Photoshop on your own. Okay, let's start off simple. Before you open Photoshop, verify that you have the photo or photos that you wish to edit. If you don't have a photo available, simply go online to Google Images and type up the theme of the photo you're looking for. When you find the right photo, click on it and Google Images will send you to a link displaying that image in front of the site that it originated from. Right click on the picture and click Save Image As or Save Picture As. A window should open at a place in your computer. Name the images where it says File Name. Memorize the location you are saving it to and then click Save. Wait a few seconds for the photo to save. Once the picture is fully saved, go to your Start menu and click All Programs. For the school computers, the program file you'll want to find is Adobe Master Collection CS3. Click on it and another menu of Adobe programs should appear. Find Adobe Photoshop CS3 and click on it. Wait for Photoshop to load, which should be less than a minute. Once the entire program is up, there should be a gray space in the middle. Unlike typical paint programs, no space is given to begin working. You create your own workshop by opening the picture that was saved earlier. Click File at the top toolbar and go down to where it says Open. And another menu should appear. Now it should open somewhere within your computer. If you remember where you saved it, go to it and open your photo. And before we crop and chop in Photoshop, there's something you'll want to notice first. Look all the way to the far right side of the program. See that little icon at the bottom with the word background and the tiny lock beside it? That means this photo cannot be moved around because it is locked in place. To unlock the photo, simply double click on the small box down below. A small box should appear. It's asking for details about converting the picture into a layer. If you simply want to make it a layer, click the OK button. You don't always have to make a photo into a layer. If you want a still background, leave the photo as is. Since you now unlock the secret to unlocking photos, it's time to learn how to use the utility kit of Photoshop, the toolbook. Let's start basic. Say a certain part of a photo stands out to you. How do you get just that part? Elementary. Use the crop icon. The crop icon is located in the toolbar on the left side of the screen. Crop allows you to cut out a certain portion from a certain angle, leaving you with a rectangular or square result. If what you want is a little more specific than that, use the quick selection tool. The quick selection tool is also on the toolbar. This tool is a tricky one, especially for blurry pictures. Essentially this tool is for selecting the outline of a portion of the image that you want and separating it from the original image. Now let's cover the oomph of Photoshop, Effects. First, click on the icon in the far right bottom again. Instead of a layer box appearing, a list of 8 effect styles should appear. Each one is different but shares similar details in the customizing windows, like opacity, blending, and color. The first style is Drop Shadow. Drop Shadow is this. A shaded copy of the selected layer or image that is placed behind its original. Inner shadow is a shadow that appears inside the image. This can be used to darken an image or make it look as if it's behind another picture. Outer glow is a bright luminescence appearing around the selected area. Inner glow is an internal light originating from the edges of the photo or layer. Bevel and emboss makes text stand out using contour and texture. Satin is used for texturizing and can be used for making the right texture if used properly. Overlays cover a photo. There are three styles, color, gradient, and pattern. When working with pattern overlay, make sure to lower the opacity, otherwise it will cover the entire layer or image with the pattern. Now that the basics of effects has been covered, you should get the idea about filters. Filters are like effects, in that they affect an image or layer and are adjustable. If you want to access filters, go to the top toolbar or file and edit are, and go to where it says filter. There are six types of filters, artistic, brushstroke, distort, sketch, stylized, and texture. 
Each one has various specific filter effects. For now, let's use an artistic filter. Now that a final product has been made, it's time to save it as a picture. Before you do so, check the window where your work is. Make sure that this is the final product that you want. If it is, go to the top toolbar once more and click File. Go down to Save As. A window will appear. This window is similar to the window that you saved your picture as, only with slight differences. Type a name you want to call your final product at Final Name. Do not click Save just yet. There is one more thing you must do. Below File Name, it should say Format. The format it should be set to is a Photoshop project. You of course don't want this. You want a final product. Click the down arrow at the right side of the box. Go down to JPEG and click on it. This means all your edits are converted into one picture. Now you can click Save. A new box should appear. This will ask you for the quality you want your picture to be at. 12 is highest, 1 is lowest. Now that the basics of Photoshop in general is done, you may have encountered or will encounter some problems in Photoshop that I have not discussed. Let's see some frequently asked questions from people who have been encountering some of these frequent problems. These questions originate from photoshopsupport.com. First question, I would like to learn more about brushes. Do you have a tutorial to recommend? I don't have one personally. There's actually a site available on Photoshop support for such a thing. Go to http colon slash slash www.photoshopsupport.com slash tools slash brushes dot html to get an introduction to brushes with fantastic tutorials. Here's another question from photoshopsupport.com. What's the best way to turn a color picture into a black and white picture? Well, also on photoshopsupport.com is a concise and accurate tutorial by Yvonne Razil for turning a color photo into a beautiful black and white one. If you want to access this tutorial, go to http colon slash slash www.photoshopsupport.com slash tutorials slash cb slash color dash two dash bw dot html. Thank you for watching this detailed video on how to use Photoshop. I hope now you never need to see this again. Have a great day.